to uh, other function which is the content creation but before that I will show you some additional function of that to track your student. Okay. So in your in our current uh, system right we cannot track each student as an individual usually in the other universities they have what is have you seen a heat map heat map uh, Twitter heat map okay the heat map is basically a cluster of colors so for example if you want to see lecture one you will see it it's very hard to track yeah, how many students are visiting your lecture one so if it's more than 100 usually it should turn red it should be a red uh, cloud if it's less than uh, like one or two it should be yellow cloud so you should so in the new system we are having the heat map but in this one we have a system called the activity uh, block so you can go down so you have your blocks right so go down to the blocks okay so you have blocks okay block 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 search huh? so you see uh, the activity tracker activity tracker so you search for the block so site go to site administration click site administration here the bottom site administration okay you can track your overall course and your student each individual student because now the thing is the uh, how do you say the aim of the LMS is eventually okay so you have the block right activity tracker. okay assignment upgrade and users courses based. okay I will show you one's features so you add a block so you search for the activity block it's somewhere inside that activity activity tracker progress progress bar just look for progress bar it's somewhere inside it left here. It's uh, the whole list. There. Okay, wait for it to load. Okay, the the whole idea of the uh, blended learning is not only to deliver blended learning; it's to also track the weak students. Yeah. So the way you track it is by adding the block for data progress bar. Come. Okay, you add the progress bar to that manage block go to the manage block and add the progress bar in the system add the progress bar to the site okay oh, it's asking you to re-login as a admin so you have a you can add a block which is known as a progress bar yeah. progress bar will show you the track of each student so suppose someone's progress bar is totally red means they are not attending your class so they are in the class and they are not accessing your information and things like that okay so progress bar you have to go home, I think, so and then add progress bar. You have to add add a progress bar. It comes in the administration setting, actually. Admin progress bar. Progress bar. Yes. Wait, wait. He he has to log in again because it logged out you automatically. Probably because you tried to add. <laughs> progress bar can you all, you all have access to progress yeah. bar okay the progress bar will actually give you uh, an editing on is it tracking all of the yeah it, it tracks uh, it actually the progress bar has two uh, function it will give you the it will it will allow you to track the your entire course overall but also each student so it will appear as a, as a green if it's fully uh, each activity so if you have 14 activities it will segment into 14 parts and then 14 activities all are full you'll see it as green so you can use that to track your student to find out which is the uh, weak student and which is the strong student or things like that from your progress bar. And can we like uh, track their attendance as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that is where you have your, your user profile. So we let him do this thing. So you just go down, blocks editing on. Okay, you edit the block. Uh, manage block. Okay. It's not turning because you are an admin. <laughs> Maybe you don't have access to that function. Your log is admin, right? Uh, you can track uh, that using the course log. Actually, I'll show you the course log. Course. Okay. Okay. So you have a progress bar. Progress bar. So you have progress bar. Ah, progress bar. Okay. So that 417. Okay. Okay. So setting install. No, no. You don't, don't, this will don't change. This is the admin. You are in the admin. Don't change this. This is the admin block. Just go back to our course. Very safer. This is the main of all the UMS lecturer. Others will catch out someone's course. So the, the way you can track that is by checking, check for your course, well, the course which we clicked just now. It's in, in my courses. Just go to the, look for, uh, look for, yeah. Just put the pomology and then from the pomology you track back. 
So click say, on call your MS and then okay, training platform IBTP. Okay, currently nobody is there, so you have the um, users. You go to the current course, my courses, participant. Click on participant here. Click here, participants. Currently, no one is logged on, right? You can click on participant block, and then you can get your uh, everything from that. Now you will not see the course log, so you'll only see one participant who is the creator of the course. But when you have all your student, you will see their course log. If you have an active course, you can try and look for it. Go to the participants, and then you will see the lo logs. So you will see, you can then you can choose. So you can delete the, the you select from this. You can say send a message, add a note. You can find from here. You can send a note to them. Actually, how do you all communicate with your student regarding lecture time and all this? How do you communicate? WhatsApp, WhatsApp right? But inside this, there's some. They have to install Moodle mobile app. So when you, they have Moodle mobile app, you can send a message on this system. They will get it in their notification. Okay. You ask them to install Moodle mobile app, either classic or Moodle mobile. So they just get from Android or Apple, and they can download the Moodle mobile app. Okay, so you can see. So you can see your course logs if you have active course. So you can show Moodle mobile app. Just go to new Moodle mobile, Moodle mobile app. So this is the Moodle mobile app. So if there are two Moodle mobile apps, so they can un uh, install either the classic based on their system. So the older, if they have the older phone, which has the older Android, they will not, not be able to use the, they have to use classic, otherwise they have the other one. So this Moodle mobile app allows them to uh, access, you can, no need a WhatsApp anymore. You can message on Moodle mobile app. It also gives you privacy. <laughs> That's why they have made. We don't want them to keep on disturbing you on weekends on WhatsApp, right? So you, you keep Moodle mobile. And then you can, if anybody asks you, like the audit asks you for interaction, you can actually print out the Moodle mobile uh, logs. Okay? Moodle mobile is a very good app. You can you please install it and communicate with students using Moodle mobile. Don't use the WhatsApp because WhatsApp, you cannot, very hard to, it's not official. This is official. Okay, so okay, so that's how you use. When you say it's asking for site address. Ah, site address is our UMS smart to. So you can do the, the oh. smart to smart to UMS dot edu dot my. So then you log in with your you put your smart to. Uh, you, the the same one which is here the smart to the copy and paste the smart to dot UMS dot edu dot my. Just try. Others you'll have to you have installed classic or. Uh, the latest one. The latest one. Okay. Try and see. Because that day, Dr. Indira had come for the training. She set it up for us. So cannot connect. Cannot connect? Okay. We, we will set it up for you later. I check with JTMK. Yeah. It's not connecting to a smart tool? No, hmm. it doesn't want to change. Okay, maybe. Try again, please. Yeah, and contact your site admin. Okay, site admin. So we, we will we will solve that problem for you. I think maybe because of your server server issue result. Moodle mobile. We all have Moodle mobile. You have? Yeah. HTTPS. Oh yeah. It connect. You it you did you use the HTTPS S S S HTF HTTP. What is that? HTTPS. HTTPS. Use the HTTPS. Okay, in our, actually, the, you know this HTTPS gives additional security to our site. Currently, our site doesn't have HTTPS. It's like your banking site. You can only go forward. You can't click the back button. But this one, you can click. So in so HTTPS as well? Yeah. Oh, okay. You can access it. Huh? Oh, okay, 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 okay. Okay, we'll try and solve the problem for you with JTMK. If you cannot access, we have to ask JTMK. The yeah? A little bit slow because the server. Then you log in with your credentials for the normal smart to UMS. Yeah? I'm sorry, I'm a bit lost around here. Can yeah. you just explain again about the mobile thing? Okay, okay, okay. So basically, when we want to communicate, when we want to communicate to your students in the classroom, we have to re resort to the normal way, which is WhatsApp or SMS. Okay. Now, the what uh, Moodle has is like a WhatsApp platform. Okay. The WhatsApp platform is called Moodle Mobile. So you need to install the Moodle Mobile app in your respective 
device. And the student need to install India device as well. Okay. So whatever you send, uh, any message you send in the Moodle system, like for example, you go down Zul, go down to that. Okay. I want you to register for the course, Dr. Bhakti, and then you will see how it works. Okay. So this is the course, right? So you add participant Zul, uh, add participant, participant add, you add from that, enroll user, you enroll users, you just add. Doctor, can you give your name? I add uh, Dr. Bhaktiya. Sir, Bhaktiya, a student, teacher. Dr. Bhaktiya. Doctor, your name, I don't, I didn't, Dr. Fifi's name is there. And then, Doctor, your name is? Kalsum, sorry. Kalsum, okay. KLSUM. KLSUM. Okay, Sacha. Kalsum, okay. 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 And then you add Dr. Fifi. 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 It's not going through, but also we are using all the time. Uh, uh, maybe. So, okay, so the old model, Moodle Mobile Classic use. Moodle Mobile cl mobile. Classic. This is why we have to handle this teach and Dr. Bhakti B A K H. B A K H B A K H. Okay. Enroll. Then you put Fifi. Okay, put Fifi F I F F Y. F I F F teacher, teacher. F I F F Y. F I F F Y. I don't know the full name. Full name of Fifi. Ah, yeah. yeah. You can enroll them as students, or can you enroll them as students because they cannot? Okay. okay, it's okay. We can still message them in the group. You will use the class. Uh, there is the older one, the legacy version. <laughs> Both will have the Moodle. You see the atas, atas, go atas. Go to the Google Play Store and then see. Download. No, no, not Moodle Moot, it is Google Play. Yeah, be fine. You just click. Just go for Moodle, M O D L E, Moodle. There are two versions of that. One is the Moodle, uh, Moodle, click on the middle. Uh, you install that? Oh, okay. Because our student. Oh, they have modified Zul, I think. But earlier we are using, right? You are using. That, that is what. Oh, Moodle Classic, good. Moodle Classic. Moodle Classic. Go to Moodle Classic. Ah, which is this one? Oh, okay, okay. I think they modify it in the server. So we try, we fix fix the problem with JTMK first. Okay, but once you have the Moodle Mobile app in place, everything will communicate with the student can communicate with you. You ask Avang, Avang later why the Moodle Mobile because we set it up for. Last in December, right? Uh, now maybe they change the security setting. And then if there's a complication between us and the lecturer and the students, we can extract the communication from the from our smart tool. Yeah, no, from the Moodle. Yeah, you can extract the. You'll have a see. I will tell you how to mo message. Okay, so suppose you had Moodle mobile app, right? Go to the UMS Zul, the UMS website. Go to the training training site. The last one, ah, the training. Okay. Suppose I want to send a message to you, right? I can actually select all the user and select a message. Go to the uh, the users. So just go to user participants, right? Participant, and then you can see. Now, suppose I want to select you, uh, send a message to you. I want to send, click, 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 and then I select. We selected user. Send a message. Okay. Okay. Just send a message. Or just right. Wait for a while. Okay. Just send. Please submit your assignment on time. For example, please uh, please uh, follow up on your assignment. I just sent. Please follow up on your assignment. On your assignment, you can also send a voice message as a voice, unless you're, uh, but not uh, encouraged because the banking is people can misuse your voice. Okay, so you go down and you send. Just send. Okay, send the message. Send preview and send. But does this only work where if they have the app on their phone? No, no. This will work. It'll send to their gym, uh, to their mail. Oh, oh it's sent to them. Okay. Send, send, send. Send message. Okay, send. Okay, so you should get in your email within about 10 seconds. You should okay. get a message <laughs> saying that. 
So you desire to the lagging student, you can tick and send. If it's general, you send, click all, select all and send. Okay, so back to participant. So you will should get an email in your official email which you have registered with UMS. So the student, please encourage them to use only their official student email for communicating with you because that you are protected legally in case they send any content. It's copyrighted. Oh, you have. Yeah, got it, got it. Okay, okay, got it right. So this is the way you message the student. So don't worry about WhatsApp because they say WhatsApp not received. This one is already sent. Okay, that's how you. So when they have the Moodle mobile, they will see it in their Moodle mobile app. So that's how we do. Okay. So that's how you can use the system. So basically, we cover 1732. So is any question about 1732? So 1732 is very easy to achieve. Any question? Any question you have about 1732? Any difficulty you before you go into content? Oh, the um, at right? mm. um, There's always things that that we don't know if Balik. we add into uh, activities like what are okay. Things, okay. Like, okay, 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 okay. Side bar. Ah, Zul, bole edit. To like uh, what is chat, choice, database, okay, okay. we'll show. If you can like tell us like quickly. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. We just go to turn editing on zone and then we. Okay, SCOM is basically, uh, okay, SCOM is a, I can show you how to make SCOM. SCOM is basically, I, I have a lecture for 15 minutes uh, long, and in, in the first five minutes, I discuss concept one. Second five, in the next five minutes, concept two and concept three. Now I want to assess the student after five minutes. So the SCOM package basically allows you to stop a lecture, freeze. The student has to get the correct answer before they go into the next. So if you want SCOM, we can show you how to develop SCOM using H5P. We have a H5, did you attend H5P training? H5P, okay. I will show you how to create SCOM if you want to. Okay. SCOM. So, it's not only your lecture, you can take any lecture and convert it into SCOM, uh, teaching object, learning object. Okay, so, okay. okay. So, assignment is basically, okay, let's see what the student actually sees. Assignment allows the student to upload uh, content into the system. Chat is basically like a forum, but it is something which you can engage in the classroom as well. So you can set up a time, for example, between 5, uh, between 5 p.m. to 6 p.m., the chat window is open. You can set it up for chat. So chat is basically, if you remember the olden days of Yahoo, Yahoo had a chat, right? That is basically the Yahoo chat window. It's nothing, <laughs> the olden days le legacy. <laughs> but no one uses that because of the... Forum is actually much better than chat. Forum is basically allowing them, it's open all the time. Chat is open only on certain time and you have to access it and then... <laughs> The, the legacy. Okay, choice is allowing you to enable, you ask a single question and you give a possible, this is actually like an objective uh, test, like in a class you say, oh, the definition of so-and-so is ABC. Choice is basically allowing you to choose. Oh, but this is in-class activities. In, in class you can do it because this is a, you can, uh, this won't basically carry uh, marks for assessment. It's just to uh, grasp, uh, understand the class, ca classroom environment, how much have they understood MCQ, okay. Database allows you to basically address, we don't use this function because they are legacy functions, means they are older. So database, go down Zul, database, 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 okay. Database allows you to fill up, for example, you give them a data, like a field and you tell them to fill up certain things inside the field. It's a form of assessment, okay, like how you can set up a puzzle block. I can show you in H5P, and then they fill up things inside that, in that puzzle block, okay. External tools are actually plugins, okay, go down to external tool. This we cannot do because this is actually created uh, by JTMK. We are not having allowed to access plugin. I'll give you an example of external tool. There is something known as a programming board, like uh, programmers want to use a board, so they create a virtual computer, and they allow the student to program, write a script in that virtual computer. Then you can use external tool. Okay, that's, it links you back to that, but the JTMK has not allowed us to link to external tool because security. Okay, feedback is like forum, but it allows you to only give feedback to the course. Feedback is very good for your MQF because feedback may give you like reflective notes. You can give you a reflection, the student reflect on your course, and then you can use the feedback. Can the students be anonymous when they do this? No, 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 there is no anonymous because everything is tracked as a user logged in. So it's a feedback, it allows you to give feedback to the lecture, okay, as a reflect. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, this is voluntary. You can ask them a reflective note, but don't give them marks because then we'll be violating our ethical. We, can, we can't give marks for feedback because that's more like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, then it'll mean they give good <laughs> feedback, they will get good marks. So we can't do that if the MK auditor will ask. Okay. The forum is, forum is, you know already. Okay, forum. The forum is what you know. There is glossary. Glossary gives you the, you can take glossary of your entire course uh, word, just the content. For example, you use uh, metamorphosis, symbiosis. You can make a glossary and you can upload the glossary which is open for reference all the time. So that glossary will stick in the course and usually on the first, first uh, introductory lecture. So they can refer to the glossary if you have specific terminology which is not okay. like metamorphosis, whatever, allelopathic, all those complicated words. Okay. But all of those, like, they are all like stuck in a stuck in PDF? You can, 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 can. You just upload as a glossary as PDF. Oh. You can convert to PDF. Okay, then you have hot potato. Hot potato is an older system in which you had to use something known as hot potato to create quiz. Okay, but nowadays nobody uses hot potatoes. Hot potatoes allowed you to create a database of 100 question or 200 question and it was sorted and then you could uh, put it into the system it would randomly select okay so each student got a different quiz but hot potatoes nowadays lecturers don't use because you need to it requires you have a you have to add so if you have a lot of questions you can use the i can format for quiz okay we have i can format you can use i can to import the quiz okay then you have your lesson which is basically having, uh, this is like a uh, summative, it's a complicated system where you have a lecture and you have an associated uh, assessment with it. It's a learning object, okay? It's a learning, so this one usually not used. Quiz is very commonly used, quiz. Quiz you can use, I can format, we can create the quiz. SCOM is basically related to the SCOM, uh, the, what I told you, the video with the, you have a survey. Survey is, uh, usually you have a poll inside this, but usually today's, uh, in today's system, it's easier to use Google Form with the embed. You can embed Google Form inside your system. Basically, you can embed anything from outside into your system. Yeah. Even if you have a Schoology, right? You can embed the Schoology inside your system and use Schoology inside Smart2. So you have seven Schoology lesson, you can embed the seven Schoology lesson and you can use this as a, even though you're using Smart2, you're still using Schoology for the, yeah. so you are given the, freedom to do that. Don't be confined uh, by the system because basically what's important is your teaching and learning style. Okay? As long as you have what is known as a learning object. Learning object means they define learning object as a content and assessment. Uh, so you have a content, you assess, you have a content. So as long as you have a learning object which is bundled, it's okay. Whatever your method because some of us use uh, short answers, some of us require, philosophers require maybe a big discussion, philosophical discussion. So it depends on you. Wiki, okay. Wiki is like a uh, Wikipedia. So Wikipedia is basically a uh, wiki is basically a collaborative wiki. Means you you assign five students to research one subject. Each one keys in a certain content. All of them create a wiki. So from the course logs, you can make out who has contributed to that wiki. For example, you say, right, normally what in the olden days we used to ask the student, give assignment. So you make a group of ten people, only two people do the work, the other people just ride on. <laughs> So with the wiki, you can track who's the, who's the, who's the, because you have the access to the course log. So this one modified the wiki and so and so. So if we want them to do like to propose a presentation like in a group, can we use wiki? You can use they can, they wiki, can yeah. Wiki will only allow you text. Okay. Uh, it won't allow you as uh, PowerPoint. So wiki will show you a notepad and then they will have to key into the notepad. They can key in mathematical formula, they can insert images, but they can only use it as a note, as a, I mean, they cannot allow, make it into a PowerPoint. For example, if you told them, uh, research this following subject and find all the YouTube videos related to global warming, then they will find all the YouTube, they can put HTML, put it all together, and they'll pro produce a wiki for you. So the wiki is in your system. And then you can track who has done the work. Yeah, it's actually, yeah. But you, you, the, but you need to do a little bit more work because you need to go back to the course file and you need to, uh, sorry, to the activity log and check who has been putting in the, but you can track. So if somebody says, uh, oh, my, my colleague, they didn't do anything, you can still track in the well, course log. Sometimes they are reluctant <laughs> to say that. Usually with Wiki, with the Google form, with the Google, if you are using Google Enterprise in UMS, you can actually use the Google because all our students have access to Google Enterprise, so you can actually use Google Docs as Wiki. Mm -hmm. Because if you assign five to a group, oh, yeah. uh, you can so you can track each one's uh, comments inside the Google Doc. So it's easy to track, and then you assign mark. 
and then you have the workshop. Workshop is basically also a complex where you have a activity and a content inside. So you need to use external tools for this. Okay, okay so that's about it. So these ones are basically all I covered. So you can add books, uh, your course synopsis, of course, and uh, it's not a con file folder. LMS content package, which is external plugin, label. Usually, labels are used to beautify the course. Okay, so usually when I add label, I'll show you an example of label. Okay, so you add label, you add label. It, this is just about formatting and beautification of the course. Okay, so I add a label called intro uh, lecture one. Okay, so you put your lecture one, and then you add. Okay, you just add. You beautify it. You can. Add a heading, make it bigger, besar, it, and then you can put a, a highlight it below the yellow, the pen highlight pen, and put yellow color. Okay, and then you have so save, and then you save. You can add smiley, whatever you want, <laughs> and then you just save and return to the course. So usually, if you follow the full blended learning, if you really want to expand your okay, now this label one you can shift up. Zul, you can move it up. Just move. So anything you can move around there. And then okay, so lecture one. Okay, so lecture one will be there, and then you'll have lecture one below that. Okay, so these labels are good for students to identify. So maybe you can assign like lect lecture will be yellow, assignment will be red or pink or green, so they know what is the label. That's just for the. Mental recall of the beauty of the course. So that's what. But these are good. If you go follow the full blended learning uh, course, they will always ask you to add uh, labels and all the separators for your statement. So click on Edit Zone for the label. Edit. You can actually duplicate. So if you want to, if you have 14 lecture, don't need to keep on creating label. You just duplicate, assign, and you just put one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So don't need to keep on doing the label because this is the one which the lecturers find very. Uh, annoying because they have to go and turn the editing on and again change, again change. Again. So, usually with this, no problem. Yeah. yeah. Uh, maybe you want to explain a little bit on the uh, activities just now. Yeah. Um, when we are selecting activities, there are yeah. a, a long list of activities there. Mm -hmm. I think not all are considered activity. For example, assignment, quiz, and box sports, they are under uh, uh, this assessment. Oh, actually, the activity means as long as we fulfill the one seven three two, right? The whatever extra we do is uh, up to you. Okay. But the so we were to, we we were to uh, get the students to uh, to take a quiz. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that is not considered in the activity okay, category, see, right? Okay. So to answer your question, we go back to one second. I just go back to the list. So. Okay, we just follow the P Zul, Zul, you can pull out the PHP server. I will show you the internal, the PHP server, the P your PHP. PHP server, the one which shows the activity. PHP oh, and the PHP. Okay, we just follow the ministry, exactly the, what the ministry advise. Okay, so, this, so all of you have access to the PHP server. Okay, anytime you can access and you can track. Do you, are you all aware of this? The PHP server? Zul, give them the address. Huh? Smart2.ums.edu.my slash bl2.php keep this bl2.php this is your so anytime you have that it's totally transparent you can track your own uh, teaching and learning on the php server okay so for auditing we just follow exactly what the ministry wants okay so okay, okay. now see uh, so first is the jam synopsis ours actually they put the synopsis then you have the kandungan content you have the activity and you have the e pen taxinan and you this. So whenever we have question related to quiz, we just follow exactly what's here. Okay. For example, where is your quiz coming under Zul? You can scroll over Zul. Okay. okay. So you have your quiz, right? Quiz. Okay. Yeah. So actually, okay. Now see the hot potato icon coming here. Actually, hot potato is the older icon. If you are not using hot potato, it won't log, uh, register. But the quiz will still be logged in once you register as a quiz, okay? So if you have any comment that you use, if you use hot potato, it will come under this icon. Otherwise, it'll, we can track it using our quiz tracker. So the quiz will actually become a kind of a uh, assessment, okay? It's assess under, under assessment, okay? So you do assessment, you have the, uh, the, uh, the, assign, the whatever assignment as well as your this quiz, okay? Sorry, and then this is actually um, our own course. Uh, okay, now, okay, now to track your course, you actually look for your faculty. Okay. You use your faculty. 
So don't worry about it. Will show it will show all fail because we are in the middle of the semester. Don't worry about it. Okay, so it will show fail, fail, fail. Don't worry about. Don't, <coughs> don't worry about because even even mine mine fail. Don't worry because we are in the beginning, so we didn't add up all the content. Okay, so you see of course. So it shows up all these contents over here. This is under all under FSSA. And yeah. Okay. The data okay, okay, okay. Into the oh, okay, 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 so okay. I haven't, I haven't really shared this uh, link with them because oh. uh, I only share the extract of the okay, 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 okay. 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 But usually in the in uh, Pusat we practice uh, complete transparency of data means everyone should be able to see your data in real time. So we share it. So I hope it's okay with you all. Is it okay? Okay, because we don't try. We try to be as service oriented as possible. So you see some of. So you have all the courses in and then you, you see, okay, I'll give an example here. Somebody like has added a lot of content but failed, not because he, uh, he or she is not, it's because of the uh, synopsis. Just one synopsis. Last time they are failing to our synopsis, so we quickly, quickly go and tell them to add the synopsis so we can find out at any given time. So usually we'll audit in the middle of the semester and at the end of the semester because the ministry will ask us for the report. That's it. So if you fulfill all, it should be okay. So that answer your question about the tenth accident. So it comes under the assessment. Assessment. So the quiz. Okay. So that's the one seven three two for the first the first part. So any more question about one seven three two? Okay. So everyone okay. So those who are not here later on, if the, those who are not here, I will re, I'll do for them again if they want to have a recap of one seven three two. I think we do one seven three two also again, Dr. Bakhtiar. When everyone is here.